Okay, let's try another related rate problem involving trig, but this time it will involve the sine instead of the tangent. The last two problems have involved the tangent. Now we're still going to use the same four steps that we used before, but uh, this time it will be sine rather than tangent. Okay, let's take a look at the problem and see what this is going to look like. Okay, now here's the problem. You've got a man standing on a dock, and uh, he's pulling a boat in. So he's pulling on this rope, and he's pulling a rope in at two feet per second. Now, uh, the problem says this. Uh, he pulls it in on a rope through a pulley located 20 feet above the nose of the boat. If the rope's being pulled in at 2 feet per second, find the rate at which the angle theta is changing when there's 35 feet of rope out. Again, as in the previous problems, you're going to want to label all the things you know and the things that you don't know. Well, in this problem, what I know is this. Uh, the man is pulling this rope in. It's going this direction at the rate of 2 feet per second. Now, just to give this some variable names, I'm going to call that distance right there, the length of the rope that's out, S. So S is the slant distance from here to here. So you know that the man is pulling in at two feet per second this way, since it's all one long continuous rope, the rope has to be coming in at the rate of two feet per second. So the rate at which S is changing, d or ds dt, would be equal to two feet per second. So you can go ahead and write that down. So I know the rate at which S is changing. Now figure out the rest of the problem. Uh, I want to know the rate at which this angle is changing. Um, so the rate at which the angle is changing. As the boat moves toward the dock, this angle is going to increase. So I'm looking for the rate at which theta is changing, which is d theta dt. So d theta dt is equal to what? So that's what I'm going to be solving for. So I need a relationship now in the third step that allows, or second step, that allows me to tie these two things together. So in this case, uh, the height is 20 feet. If this is the angle, this would be the opposite side. Uh, this slant distance here would be the hypotenuse of the triangle. So since I know something about the opposite and the hypotenuse, on this problem, I'm going to use the sine of theta. So the sine of theta would be equal to the opposite side, which is 20 feet. So I'll have 20 feet here divided by the hypotenuse, which is s. So it's going to be s. So that is my initial relationship. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 20 divided by s. Now the next step is take the derivative of both sides, but a little trick here before you take the derivative. If you started right here, you'd have to use the quotient rule. So what I'm going to do is take this s from the bottom on this side, and I'm going to move it up to the top here. And I'll make it look like this. The sine of theta would be equal to, now I'll leave the 20 feet where it is. Here's the 20 feet. And take this, think of this as being s to the positive one. If I move it up to the top, now it's s to the negative one. Now the whole reason for doing this is to avoid the quotient rule. So I'll take the derivative of this. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. But don't forget to add a d theta dt. Then you've got the 20 feet, so that's a constant, just leave it alone. And now I find the derivative of this term, but that's just the power rule. So bring the negative 1 down in front, you've got s, now it's to the negative 2 power, and don't forget to add a ds dt. Okay, now, now to find the derivative, you move s up at the top. Now that you've got the derivative, to make the computation easier, go ahead and take that s to the negative 2, move it right back down to the bottom, and make it be s to the positive 2. So this is going to be the cosine of theta times d theta dt. Here's the 20 feet. And I'm just going to take this s to the negative 2 and move it right back down to the bottom and make it be s to the positive 2. So s squared. And I'll put parentheses around that. And this whole thing is times ds dt. 
And then just to make it a little bit easier, we'll go ahead and put the 20 feet over this and make it negative. So that'll get us to the cosine of theta times d theta dt is equal to, and this is going to become a negative 20 feet divided by s squared. And then you've got a ds dt over here. So ds dt. Okay, now I want to solve for d theta dt, so I'll take the cosine from this side and move it to the bottom on this side, which will give me this. d theta dt is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. And I'll put that in parentheses times a negative 20 feet divided by s squared times ds dt. Okay, so I've got the problem set up the way I want to. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the things that I know in order to solve the problem. So that gets me to this. I've got d theta dt is equal to, now I'm going to pick up a problem here. I need to know what was theta at the moment in question. But at the moment I don't need that, so I'm going to have to do another little side calculation like we've done before. So I'm going to leave that one blank for right now. And I'll plug this other stuff in. So I've got negative 20 feet divided by and what is s at the moment in question? Well, I'll look back up at the problem. It wants to know uh, what rate is the angle changing when s is 35 feet. So this is when s is equal to 35 feet. So go ahead and plug in 35 feet right here. So this would be 35 feet. But remember, it's 35 feet squared. So remember to square that. Put parentheses around this, and that's times ds dt. DT. Now, here's the problem. Uh, I need to know uh, what is the cosine of theta. So what was theta at the moment in question? So here's what's causing me the trouble right here is this thing. So there's nothing in the problem that gives me that. So again, I'm going to have to go off and do another little side calculation like we've had to do in some of the other problems. So let's go ahead and take that right now. And I'll move off the side over here to do this. So at the moment in question, what was theta? So what I've got is this. I've got to go back and start with the sine relationship. Uh, the sine of theta is 20 over s. So I'll start with this. So this is going to be my little side calculation to figure out what theta is. Okay, I know that the sine of theta is 20 feet over s. And at the moment in question, s is equal to 35 feet. So at the moment in question, s is 35. So this would be 20 feet over 35 feet. So the sine of theta is 20 of this. Now the feet will cancel out immediately, which gives you this. The, uh, the theta, the sine of theta would be equal to 20 over 35. Therefore, theta itself would be the inverse sine of 20 over 35. So stick that on a calculator and you'll find that at the moment in question theta will turn out to be 34.8 degrees. So I know what theta is. But what I want is the cosine of theta. So now that I know what theta is, I'll go ahead and find the cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta, the cosine of 34.8 8 degrees, if you stick that on a calculator, you will get 0.821. So 0.821. So this is the value that I'm going to put in over here to solve. So I'll put a little box around this just to remind everybody that this, is, this was my side calculation. So from here to here here, 
and then finally back over to here. Okay, so I had to do that side calculation. Well, now that I know what the cosine of theta is, take that value and go ahead and plug it in right there. So that's going to give you down here 0.821. But remember, the, the trig functions always return a pure number so it doesn't have any units with them. Okay, now the next step is to, I know the rate at which ds dt is changing, that's 2 feet per second, so I'll wind up with this. Uh, d theta dt would be equal to, and again, I'll put everything in here. We'll scoot this down just a little bit. Um, I've got 1 over 0.821 times negative 20 feet over 35 feet, but that's squared. And I know the rate at which s is changing, which is 2 feet per second. Okay, now watch the units. In the top, you've got feet times feet, square feet. In the bottom, when you square this, you'll have square feet. Everything will drop out, and you'll get this. d theta dt is equal to, and it will turn out to be 0 0.04 nothing per second because all the units cancel out. But remember, if you have nothing per second, that is the same thing as radians per second. So this thing is changing at 0 0.04 radians per second. Now, if you wanted to change that to degrees per second, you could take that answer and multiply it by 180 degrees over pi radians. So use this conversion factor. If you do that, you will get um, d theta dt, so the rate at which theta is changing is 2.29 degrees per second, and that would be the answer to the problem. So again, just kind of back up and take a look at the whole thing. We'll zoom out just a little bit here. And yeah, we'll look at this. Okay, starting with the sign, um, find the derivative, but remember this little trick of moving the s up. I think I'll underline that. So take the s from the bottom and move it up to the top and make it be a negative. Find the derivative and then turn around and move it right back down again. So that gives you the derivative. Plug in the things you know. When you get around to theta, you've got to go do a little side calculation to find out what theta was at the moment in question, in this case, 34.8 degrees. Take that answer, plug it back in. Now you've got everything that you need to do to solve the problem. So plug in all the numbers. It will give you the answer in radians per second. If you want to change that to degrees per second, use the conversion factor, and you've got it. So there is a sample problem using the sine of theta.